Hey, welcome to Walking with Jesus. I'm Pastor Tanner. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, our passage for this morning is going to be in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. This is episode 24. Let's dive right in. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and they started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the waves. Silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. All right, so personally, I feel like this is one of the most important stories that we have about Jesus in the New Testament because it really puts some things into an important perspective for us as believers. Let's uh, break this story down for a couple of minutes. First of all, Jesus gets in the boat with his disciples and they cross to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Now, the Sea of Galilee was prone to pretty dangerous storms and a lot of Jesus' disciples were fishermen. These are men who had grown up on this sea their entire life since the time that they were young boys and so they knew just how dangerous one of these storms could be on the Sea of Galilee. You have to remember this at its biggest point is seven miles wide and 21 miles long so if you get stuck out in the middle of the sea and uh, your boat capsizes you're in a lot of trouble and because of the way that the wind hits this sea and the way that it sits in the mountains there could be tremendously large waves that could develop, especially as the winds really whipped up. So this was, no, this was no joke. This was not like they were sitting out on a pond in a boat. These guys were in a dangerous situation. I think something else, though, that we need to understand is that when the disciples asked Jesus to come into the boat, they probably thought that meant that they weren't going to have any problems. They weren't going to face anything difficult definitely not dangerous. I mean, come on. Jesus is with them, right? And I think that a lot of times we have this same false perspective that just because we've now asked Jesus to be our Lord and our Savior, just because we've asked Jesus into the boat or into our lives, that that's the end of problems, man. Everything's just going to be smooth sailing from here on. Everything's going to be easy. We're not going to encounter difficulty. We're not going to sin. Definitely not going to sin. And everybody's just going to love us, and we're just going to be in this perfect little utopia. Unfortunately, (laughs) that's just not true. That day is coming. Someday, Jesus is going to return for us, and he's going to set everything back to the way that it was in the Garden of Eden. And then, we're going to experience his pure goodness. Until that time, we still live in a world that's affected by sin. That's our choices and the choices of other people. But the thing of it is, is that sin, it's not, it doesn't just affect itself. It's not just like one ripple in a pond. No, it's like throwing a bunch of stones into a pond and all of those ripples beginning to bump up into one another. So all of our different, all of these different sins have different consequences and they have consequences in the natural, but also in the supernatural. What I mean by that is there are, you know, spiritual consequences to our bad decisions as well. So because we live in this fallen and broken world, we are going to experience storms in this life. And that's okay. That was not God's design. It was not God's plan for us. It's not something that He wants for us. However, it is something that He will bring us through. So they get out in the middle of the get out in the middle of the sea and all of a sudden this huge storm does come up. And as we mentioned, these guys know the potential danger of this situation, 
and the waves are starting to come up over the sides of the boat. The wind's picking up. They're starting to rock. They, they know <laughs> that they're in trouble. So they look to Jesus, and Jesus is in the back of the boat, laying down, and he's asleep. What immediately goes to their mind? Well, that's just great. Of course this is happening. I mean, if Jesus were awake, none of this would be occurring, right? If Jesus were awake, we would be absolutely fine. We have to remember that they lived in a world that was heavily influenced by this idea of false gods. And the false gods were very human in nature. I mean, they had these supernatural powers, but many times they had a lot of the same fallen natural attributes of human beings. And if they weren't paying attention to something, things could get out of their control. And so now they begin to put this kind of idea on Jesus that, you know, if he was awake, things would be okay. But it's because he's fallen asleep that this storm has somehow shown up and put them into trouble. So what do they need to do? They need to wake Jesus up. And so that's exactly what they do. They wake him up. And what do they say? They make an accusation. And how many times when things get rough in our lives, do we make accusations against God? They say, you know what, Jesus? You don't even care. You don't care about me. You don't care about us. You're over there taking a nap, and we're all about to die. And we think, well, man, that's pretty, uh, <laughs> that's pretty gutsy to talk to Jesus like that. I mean, how dare they say something like that to the Savior? We do it all the time. Jesus, you don't care about my marriage. Jesus, you don't care about my happiness. You know, you don't care about my job. You don't care about my kids. You don't, you don't care about my health. And we get these lies into our mind, especially when things aren't going well, especially when the storm hits. Now, when the storm isn't around and it's blue skies, we're like, oh, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. But as soon as the storm hits, we're like, I've been abandoned. God doesn't care. I'm on my own. I got to wake God back up. I got to do something to get God's attention. So when Jesus wakes up, he rebukes the wind and the waves. He rebukes the storm, gone. One word from Jesus, it's gone. And the disciples are looking around and they're like, yeah, that was freaky. Yeah, we, um, I don't guess we really know who we're dealing with here. This guy even has power over the wind and the waves, but this is what I'm talking about. This is what we wanted all along. In fact, this is the way it should have been. There should have never been a storm. And Jesus says, where's your faith at? Like, are you guys kidding me? Do you, do you not even understand yet? How long have you been with me? How many different times do you have to watch me be me before you get it through your thick heads? It wasn't about the storm. They are no safer with Jesus being in the boat if there is a storm or if there isn't a storm. Do you understand that? You're no safer in your life when a storm is going on versus when it isn't. If you have Jesus, that's as safe as you can be. And here's the other thing. There are no guarantees. Because we live in a fallen and broken world, some people live to be 95. Some people don't even live to be nine. And you know what? I don't always understand all of that because I do believe that there is healing in the atonement. I believe that God has a purpose for us and His purpose is for us to know life and life abundantly. But that's not always the case for every person. Jesus is saying, your trust should not have been in the presence or the absence of a storm. Your faith should not be dependent on your exterior circumstances or situation. Your faith should have been that I am in the boat with you. And if I'm in the boat with you, you are as in good of a situation as you could ever be. Whether your finances are great, money's in the bank, marriage is on top, kids are doing wonderful, and you're healthy as can be. Or if you find yourself facing down persecution and your life is about the end. Or maybe you have a disease and you're coming to the end of your life. Or God forbid something else happens in a relationship and somebody makes a choice or a decision outside of your control, outside of your desire, and you find that relationship crumbling. 
If you have Jesus with you in the boat, none of those other things matter. Yeah, they hurt and they're painful, but they don't matter for our trust and our faith because our faith is in the absolute goodness of God. And we know that if He is for us, nobody can really be against us. It doesn't matter what we can see. It doesn't matter what our senses perceive. If Jesus is in the boat, if He is in our life, ultimately, we are okay. Because at some point, that storm is going to end and we're still gonna be with Jesus. So don't get frustrated when the storms come. Don't buy into the lie that God has abandoned you or doesn't care about you because he's with you in the boat. What I'm, what I'm scared for, what I think back to, are the times when I didn't have Jesus with me. Do you remember that time in your life when I was trying to get across the sea through the storms on my own? Now that's a truly terrifying time of life when you're trying to do it all without Jesus being with you. Those are the people that we should be scared for. Those are the people that our hearts should go, to, go out to. But if we have Jesus, we already have everything. Will you pray with me today? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are in our lives, that you are in the boat. And Lord, we know that just because you might be quiet, we may not have heard from you in the last five minutes, you've not abandoned us. You are with us. Your Holy Spirit is the seal of that inside of us. And so Lord, please help us to trust you no matter what's going on around us. Help us to know that you are with us and that you're working on our behalf even in ways that we can't see and that you're bringing us through this storm. And you know what? You're going to bring us through the next one and you're going to bring us through the one after that. And Lord, even when the day comes that the end of our life is near and the storm of this life, the, the final payment of, this, of the sin of this world does kill us, we come through that storm too. Because at that point, we get to be with you for eternity in heaven. So help us remember that as long as you are near, as long as you are with us, nothing else matters. We have nothing to fear because we have your love at our side. Father, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, I pray that you're encouraged by this today. If you would, go ahead and share on Facebook so others can be blessed. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. God bless you.